Now, four years ago, actor Rob Delaney's son, Henry, died from a brain tumour. He was only two. And Rob is now sharing the family's story in his new book, A Heart That Works. And he joins me now. And this, it's so lovely to see you. It's great to see this you. This is astonishing. It Thanks. is absolutely astonishing. It's obviously really moving, mm -hmm. but it's quite a remarkable piece of work. How hard was it to, to write this? You know, it depends. Um, if I put in a good week of work, you know, like f five, eight hour days in a row, then that was pretty devastating. So I learned to sort of pull back and right. do a little less. Um, but it was great to organize all my thoughts and it really made me love and appreciate Henry's mom and his brothers more, you know, when I, saw, when I just saw in black and white what they had been through, sure. even though I'd been there watching it. It was, it was very helpful for me to write it all down. You get a real sense of your wee boy when you write about him. Mm -hmm. And also your family, particularly yeah. your wife as well, who just seems like the most wonderful woman, as an astonishing lady, a lady I'd like to go out with and share a <laughs> bottle of wine. She, she just sounds like a great woman. I'll arrange it. <laughs> I know, it would be lovely. But everything's going well in your life. You know, you're over mm -hmm. here doing catastrophe, gets a BAFTA. Yeah. It's all, it, on the outside, everybody on the outside, it looks like, you know, you've got three fantastic kids. Yeah. And then wham. Yeah. Your wee guy gets this, yeah. and a massive brain tumour in his little head. It was huge, wasn't it? He, it was big, yeah. Um, and it was right next to his brain stem. So when they took it out, it uh, left him with some pretty significant disabilities because yeah. so much is controlled mm. uh, by the brain stem and what surrounds it. So yeah, he had a, a tracheotomy um, and he couldn't walk and he couldn't talk. Um, but he, his frontal lobe was fine, yeah. so he was very alert and creative and funny. So he learned Makaton, which is a way to talk with your hands um, for kids, uh, pretty quickly, and so did we. Mm -hmm. And so we had a very a wonderful, you know, conversations and jokes and fun. And so he was, a, yeah, he was a wonderful, wonderful little person. And there he is, he's kind of becomes, that becomes the kind of heart of the family, doesn't it? It's, yeah. you know, and what's happening to him. Yeah. And you're very kind about the NHS in, yeah. in the book and, and the, the amount of people who, who helped, who sort of went, you know, I guess one step more. Yeah. You know, they, they really did to help him and well, to help the, you. Yeah, the NHS was amazing. And I moved here in my mid thirties. So I'd had a few decades of American, you know, private health yeah. insurance and stuff, which just, you know, because of the NHS, we didn't have to spend time on the phone with insurance companies saying, please approve this MRI, you know, right. or why can't I get this prescription that I want, you know? And so the NHS uh, was amazing. Even though the worst thing happened, yeah. the NHS, the care that we were shown was remarkable. How do you function though as a family when this is happening? I guess you don't have a choice. You know, you've, you've got to just keep going, but I wonder how, yeah. you're, able, how you're able to, to do that. I mean, I would t talk to myself out loud, you know, right. like walking down the street. No, I didn't, it didn't bother me at all. I would say like, well, uh, Henry's illness and then death didn't make me love his brothers any less. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't make me love his mother anymore. I told Henry I loved him many times a day. If that's true, then I better take care of his favorite people in the whole world after he's gone. Mm -hmm or he could haunt me, yeah. <laughs> I wish he would. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, he deserves that. So mm -hmm. if I loved him, then I damn well better take care of my wife and his exactly. brothers. That's true, that's so, so true. That's a wonderful way to look at it. Yeah. He did uh, go through so much in his little life. He I mean, he, he really did. And I think sometimes kids who are really sick, they are wise beyond their years. They kind of teach us in a way. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Cause he did have that wisdom, yeah. but at the same time, he was a little kid. He loved to steal pens from nurses. He would adamantly insist that everybody gather around him and sing Incy Wincy Spider. You know, so he was a, uh, he could be a despot too. He, he, he <laughs> contained multitudes. And that's good. Yeah. You know, he was just a, just a wee boy doing the, doing the absolute best that he could. Yeah. What I really liked about the book as well, when, when something like this happens, we never know what to say to yeah. people. Yeah. We never know what to do. And, and oftentimes we say, if there's anything you need, yeah, yeah, let yeah. us know. But yeah. you say in the book, don't ask, do. Yeah. Just, just do, just do things. Sort of show, don't tell. Yes. We don't need lip service that you, you know, uh, you know, what can, that's put something on me. Let me know if there's anything. Oh, now I have another thing to worry about. Right. 
come over, do the dishes, please. Yes, <laughs> and bring something yeah. to eat. Hoover, yeah. yeah. Make something, even yeah. if it's just a, a cake or make a meal. Yeah, just make the weird dish, that practical. the casserole that you have yeah. made in 20 years that yeah. your mom, get the recipe, make it poorly, give it to me, I'll eat it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because it gives you something less to, yeah. to worry about and yeah. something less to worry about. But that that is so, so important. You do dedicate the book to, to Lee, to your wife. Yeah. You dedicate it to her. and. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes when something like this happens, it can rip a family apart. But in yeah. your case, it does seem to, you, you've all really bonded together. Yeah, I guess. So I'm having a crisis of faith after his death in, mm. in that I'm developing more faith, which is upsetting because I wanted to be very angry forever right. after he died. And, but the fact is, is something special happened in our family during his illness that made us not forget about the other members. I don't know how or why that happened because it wasn't my idea, uh, but we did. We took care of each other and we knew to do that. And as a result, we still live under the same roof yeah. and are usually happy about it. Yeah, exactly. You did do a, a, a beautiful thing and it was for your boy. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the way that you communicated with this yeah. amazing this, this yeah. amazing way that kids can communicate. You did a CBB story, didn't you? I Using did. that method? Yeah, so they asked me to do a bedtime story. Lovely. Which I watch, you know, I've watched them as many as anybody has, and I love them. <laughs> and I said yes, but I want to do it in Makaton. Um, and this was not long after Henry had died. And uh, you know, Mr. Tumble on something special, my hero of heroes. Absolutely. He does Makaton, and uh, there's a wonderful group called Singing Hands. These women, Suzanne and Tracy, who do amazing Makaton, and they have their own channel at Great Ormond Street Hospital, which the kids are crazy fantastic. about. And. Um, but I said, look, uh, these kids need this, you know? I mean, think of the joy that Mr. Tumble brings kids oh, every day. It gives them a means to communicate, Absolutely. you know? So I said, let, let me add my little contribution to the pile. And so was very grateful to get to do that and to have kids get to see a story in their exactly. language. Wait, I don't know how you got through that though. That must have been really- We would pause and sometimes I would cry. Yes. I say it in the book. At one time they were like, do you want to take a break? And I'm- <laughs> I usually try to be a pretty nice guy, but they're like, do you want to take a break? I was like, no, I don't want to take a break. Yeah. I'm crying because my son died. I will pause, take a few deep breaths, and then we will continue so the children who need their Macadon story get their Macadon story. And, and everybody was it. like, okay. Okay, and they did it, and <laughs> yeah. it's fine, and you're allowed to do that. You can see, I missed up. There's one part where I talk about being cold and lonely, and I, I do, you, there's tears in my oh, eyes. Of, well, of course there is. You yeah. know, you're a human being, and mm. you've written the most incredible book, Rob. You really have. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's kind of life-affirming. I wasn't sure what to expect, you know, when I, when I was reading it, but it's, it's quite, it stayed with me. So much of it has stayed with me. Well, I didn't know it's what to expect cool. while I was writing it. I, oh. I wanted it to be very angry, and I wanted yeah. the book to offload some of my pain and have other people read it and go, oh, you know? But the love for Henry shined through and for the rest of my family, and so a, a I guess that's what's been happening, is love has Absolutely. been working its magic. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. What an amazing, what an amazing tribute to a smashing wee boy. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Right, Rob's book, It's a Heart That Works, beautiful title as well. It's out right now, and I can thoroughly recommend it.